I want to welcome you to our Tuesday Bible study tonight. Let us begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for your many blessings that are showered upon us every single day. And so we ask you to continue to water us with those blessings that we might grow in our relationship with you. For we ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. So today we're looking at the book of 2 Corinthians. And I know we seem to be bouncing all over the place. What I am doing and will be doing over this next year is looking at the New Testament lessons, the epistle lessons that are pointed for our Sunday lectionary that we don't get the opportunity to preach on or look at very much outside of reading them on Sunday mornings. The problem is that sometimes these, these lessons serve the lectionary, and so they're taken out of their context to serve a theme that the lectionary writers uh, for Sunday worship are trying to, to accomplish. Uh, but there's an actual context within the book of 2 Corinthians for this passage. And so on Tuesday nights, I am going to try to lay that out because it doesn't always match up perfectly with the lectionary purpose. And so when we look at our lesson for this, I, I, I do need you to get a little bit of background about 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians, this is Paul, uh, again, unable to visit. He wants to visit with the Corinthians, but he is prevented from visiting. So again, he cannot visit, all right? The visit is canceled, and he's concerned about the Corinthians. If you've written it, written his, written, wrote, I'm, I'll figure out the verb here in just a second. If you read Paul's book to the first Corinthians, you will know, oh, Corinth was a church with a lot of challenges. They were ready to kill each other. And so Paul finally made some progress amongst the Corinthians. Uh, they, were ha they had poor against the uh, rich. Uh, 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 you had old Christians versus new Christians. You had, again, Jewish Christians versus Gentile Christians. So all this conflict was, was boiling to the surface in Corinth. And Paul finally seemed to, to help overcome some of that conflict that exists in the church. But now he's concerned about the witness of the church. Okay? So he's unable to visit. He's concerned about them. He's afraid that they're missing the point of what it means to be witnesses to Jesus Christ. See, Paul wants to make sure they understand that the word of the day should always be forgiveness. That's what the church is about. We are to announce the forgiveness of God to the entire world. You wouldn't know that from the messages of most congregations. Most congregations preach a message of self-righteousness. How do I earn God's pleasure? How do you be more like me or the pastor or whoever it is so you can get your little slice of heaven too? It's about forgiveness. Some of the worst people about holding grudges are Christians. It's about forgiveness. If God has forgiven you, how can you hold on to grudges and the hatred that you have for other people and the bigotries towards certain groups of people? This is something that needs to be played out in the life of the church and has been played out in the life of the church over this year of COVID. We have not represented Jesus Christ well. I don't care whether it's left wing or right wingers. They do not and have not been representing Jesus Christ. Whenever we withhold the forgiveness of God from one group of people because they disagree with our politics, are you serious? So there's, you know, only one sin that cannot be forgiven and that's not agreeing with me politically, right? That's not what the Bible says. Our message is a message of forgiveness, okay? And so what happens, and this is a very contemporary theme that was happening in Corinth, that rather than preaching a message of forgiveness, they're preaching a method, message of worthiness. How do you become worthy of this gift of God? And so... Paul, ultimately, and this is right before the passage that we do right now, says that we are all jars of clay. Get over yourself. It's not about the container of the message of God. You are the one that contains the message of God and bring it to the world, and you're making it about the container rather than the message that you're carrying by making it about the worthiness of the container. The container is just a jar of clay. It can drop, it can smash, it's fragile, it can be broken. 
When it's broken, it often cannot be put back together except by God. Okay? So you are a jar of clay. You're frail. You're fragile. You can be broken. Stop making the message about your worthiness. And this is what a lot of churches do. What they do is they set up a standard. The standard for heaven is what? It's me. It's the pastor. It's the goodly, kindly people of the church. That's ridiculous. This is <laughs> a message that has gone awry. Okay, we have lost sight of our purpose. So this is what, this is again what, um, oh, I lost my, uh, my, oh, there it is, my eraser. This is what Paul was trying to address in the message, and this is kind of the context right before this. So I want you to keep that in mind when you read this lesson. You are what? I want you to keep this here. We're going to put this right up at the top here. I want you to keep this in mind. This is who you are. You are a jar of clay. You are a fragile person. You are a person easily broken. Don't make the message of the kingdom of heaven about you. Don't make yourself a standard. See, this is one thing. I, I really work hard. I, I try not to work hard, I should say, at presenting an, an image of who I am. Um, yeah, there's sometimes I have a little bit higher energy than at other times. The other times I'm lower energy, uh, but I try to make sure that when you see me, you see me the same way that my family sees me. So I'm not standing up here putting on airs. I have seen pastor. Now, I will tell you, when I do liturgy, obviously, you get a liturgical voice because you want to be able to project that, but that's not necessarily a change in personality. But when I preach or when I interact with you, I try to be the same person that I am with my family and everybody else. Okay, now you'll get some pastors to get up there and preach, and this is the way they talk, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden they get this pastor voice, or when they talk to their people, they get this pastor clergy voice, and you're like, this person doesn't exist in the real world, okay? They're setting themselves up as a standard. I am somehow the example of what you are supposed to accomplish, and ooh, we want to be like this holy person. <laughs> I, I'm holy because God has set me apart to be a messenger of God's grace, but certainly not because I'm worthy in any way. I'm a jar of clay. And you know me long enough, you will know that very quickly. And you know what? I'm okay with that because I've got nothing to hide from you. It's not about me. It's about Jesus. So we need to keep that in mind when we take a look at our lesson for today. So here we are. I'm going to read this, 2 Corinthians. Now, Paul's trying to put you at ease, too. You're a jar of clay. It's okay. You're frail. You're going to be broken. It's okay. The message of Jesus, rather than being harmed by you being a jar of clay, actually is able to shine because of that. Just be who you are. Stop trying to hide behind this, uh, this visage that's, that's, that's inaccurate or, or hides who you are. You know, you know it reminds me. I know I'm, I'm stalling getting into the lesson. We'll get to the lesson in just a moment because this is related to this. I think sometimes the worst places, you know, if a person is an alcoholic or a drug addict, or maybe they struggle with, uh, you know, whatever thing it is in their lives. Sometimes the worst place for a person to come out and reveal these things are in a church. Because churches can be so judgmental. We're supposed to be about forgiveness. Oh, but God forbid somebody comes out and makes a confession about who they really are and what they're truly struggling with. Oh, all of a sudden they become a pariah. They get kicked off the board of elders or the council or whatever it is. Oh, we can't allow them or having any influence by teaching Bible study. This is exactly who you need. People who are jars of clay who are admitting their frailties. But yet we in the church put this guilt and this angst upon people. Don't reveal who you really are. And so we've got all these people strutting around pretending to be something that they aren't. You're a jar of clay. 
You've got warts and faults. Wouldn't it be an amazing church if we could just reveal who we truly are? Our warts and our faults are good things in everything. We would be a real church. And then, guess what? Jesus Christ could truly be known. Because people say, oh, you're a church that's not putting on airs. This is what Paul is trying to get at. But there's a, 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 there's a fear of being frail like this. But again, what it does is it makes the message about Jesus, not about us. Verse 13. Paul writes, We have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with the scripture. I believed and so I spoke. We're a jar of clay. He just finished telling you, you're a jar of clay. So if, if the message isn't about me, you just speak what's been spoken to you. Stop making it about you. Stop making it about the jar and make the message about Jesus. Okay? We also believe, we also speak. Paul goes on. Because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will also raise us with Jesus and will bring us Bring, bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace, as it extends more and more to people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. He's saying, look, you're a jar of clay, you're frail, your body's going to decay, you're going to die. It's okay. It's not about the jar. Just be faithful, proclaiming the message of Jesus, because there will be a time where that frailty will be no more won't be on this side of the kingdom of heaven. People get cancer, and they die. People grow old, and they die. People make mistakes. Don't hide it, because in your mistakes, people can actually see who Jesus is. <laughs> Hear me. In your mistakes... That's where Jesus truly shines. Because then they realize it's not about you. Everybody knows you're a hypocrite. Everybody except for you. Okay. All right. Let me write this. This is true. Everyone, everyone knows you are a hypocrite. I'm going to spell it wrong. Except for you. You may as well admit it. Everybody knows that you're a jar of clay. Except for you. You may as well admit it. Because when you admit it, you steal the power from people to throw this in your face, and now all of a sudden, Jesus can shine, because now they look at you and say, okay, you know that you're frail. You're no longer a hypocrite when you admit it. I'm a hypocrite. I know I am. I make mistakes. I'm frail. That's why I need Jesus. Now Jesus can shine. Now Jesus can come out. Okay? But as long as, you, as, long as you're convinced that you're not a hypocrite, as long as you conv you're convinced that you're somehow better than everybody else, as long as you're convinced that you're somehow <coughs> not frail, and won't be broken. Jesus can't be seen. Because you're making the message all about you. Okay? God does this for our sake. So you need to let go of this. You need to understand this is who I am accepted. Because Jesus has got you covered. That's what Paul is saying. So don't lose heart, Paul goes on. Verse 16, don't lose heart. Stop making it about yourself. Don't lose heart. God's got you covered. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature, is, it's being renewed every single day. We're a jar of clay, but Jesus continues and is faithful to renew us in our spirits every single day so that we know where we stand. Because a slight momentary affliction, I don't know, cancer, I don't know, MLS, Death itself, we're on this long death process right now, right? That's kind of depressing. 
Not really. We've had the privilege of life, and I'm so grateful for the life I've had. I don't know how long it will last, but it's been a wonderful, it's a wonderful opportunity. And then there's an even better opportunity at the end of this life, because this body does get frail. I think sometimes our decaying bodies reminds us that we have a home other than here and helps direct us to there so that we're ready. Right now, if you're young, you're healthy, enjoy this life. God wants you to enjoy this life. For some of us, we're on the other end and we start looking and saying, well, you know, I'm thinking about death a little bit more. And Paul's just saying, it's okay. We're jars of clay. But God is renewing our spirits every day so we might have hope and know that we have a place with God. This slight momentary affliction, verse 17 again, is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Is that what I just said? He goes on, because we look not at what can be seen, but what cannot be seen. What can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with human hands, one that's eternal in the heavens. Paul's trying to give you some hope. You may be a jar of clay. You may be filled with faults and frailties. Your body may break. But we make the message about Jesus. Why? Because Jesus transcends this life. When we allow ourselves to be seen for who we truly are, frail, broken, jars of clay, then Jesus can shine. And we can remind the world that no matter what the condition of this world might be in, no matter what your status might be in, near to death, long life ahead of you, we've got a hope in Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that, uh, that you accept us as we are. We don't accept ourselves as we are. We don't like ourselves as we are. You accept us as we are. Who are we to argue? Yeah, we're jars of clay. We're frail. As soon as we admit that, I think Jesus can shine. And so we're asking that Jesus would shine through this jar of clay. And through those who are listening today. For he asks this in Jesus' name. Amen. May God's blessing be upon you and send you forth in peace in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.